Now let's look at how we can create more sophisticated layouts by learning how to span items across rows and columns. As you know, grid items span only one column and row track by default, but they can span multiple rows and or column tracks using the same properties that we use to position them. Here's the HTML that I will begin working with. I have a container that has seven items. In regards to my CSS, all of the items have a dark teal background color except for the first item. I've made this a different color since this is the item that we're going to be adjusting with our code. In the last exercise, I showed you how we could target one of our items and control where it appears within the grid by using our grid column start and grid column end or grid row start and grid row end. Here, we're going to use the same properties, but we will set them a little bit differently. I'm going to use grid column start, and I'm going to tell my first item, item number one, to start at line one. This is right here on the left side of my grid. Instead of adding the grid column end as only being one cell away, we're going to tell this to span to the end of our grid, or the fourth line. So when I go ahead and save this now, you will see that item one now is starting from the very beginning and spanning all the way to the end. If we look at our grid overlay, you can see that it spans from the first line and goes all the way over here to the fourth line. Another way of writing this is just telling this to end at negative one. This is going to do the exact same thing. The advantage of using negative one is that if the size of our grid changes, this will always go from the beginning line to the ending line. We can also have items span across multiple row tracks by using the grid row start and row end. Let me just change this to grid row start. We'll have this start at line one and then we'll change this to grid row end and let's have it end at line three. If I save my page and I refresh, you can see how my first item is spanning from line one all the way down to line three. The rest of the items will adjust as needed. It is possible for us to use our shorthand and we can also have the item span both rows and columns. I will start off by changing my code a little bit. I'm going to use grid row shorthand and I'll specify that I want the item to start at line two and span to line four. In regards to the next property, I'm going to use grid column, and we will have this start at line two and go to line four as well. If I save now and we refresh, you can see how the item has now moved. It is now starting at row line two and going to row line four. It is also starting at column two and going to column four. Now, ideally, I would like it to fill in this additional space. Because this particular item is taking up more cells, my grid is making more column and row tracks as needed. So what I'll do is I'll change my grid row to span to grid row five. When I do this, you can see that now the first item is taking up the bulk of the space that is shown here. In addition to writing your code like this, we can also use span within our code. So instead of writing to slash five and telling it to go to grid line five, we can simply write that we want it to start on line two and we want it to span for three rows. I'll do the same thing for the grid column. Instead of writing two dash four, I'm simply going to write span two. If I save my page and we refresh, you can see that the item has now moved. What's happening here is it's starting at row line two and spanning for three lines. So it's going down one, two, and then three. If I was to change this to two and we save this and refresh, you can see that now it only spans to two lines. Let me change this back to three. And then since we wrote grid column and told it to just span two columns, we don't have to tell it where it needs to start. It's just going to start where it normally would and span across two columns. I've given you several different ways that you can control how items sit within the grid. We now know how we can control them in spanning both rows and columns. 
This will allow us to make more sophisticated sorts of grids. And in essence, we're now creating layouts that work in both the horizontal and vertical space.